I'm just going to be very, very frank. I'm still ticked off about it. I'm still ticked off about it. Two chains approached me last night at the games hollering at me about what I said yesterday. I'm telling you right now, it made me sick to my stomach. Here's a kid. You had questions about his height. That was answered. You had questions about his weight. That was, hand, that was answered. You had questions about his hand size. That was, hand, that, was, that was handled. Obviously, you didn't have any questions about his game. He completed 69% of his passes, most of them in a the pocket. He threw for over 4,300 yards. He threw 42 touchdowns and just uh, seven interceptions. And, oh, by the way, he ran for 1,000 yards. And you got people comparing his running ability to that of Michael Vick in Michael Vick's heyday. And then what do we come with? Oh, he's not studying. Uh, you know, his film work is questionable. His work ethic and leadership is questionable. I mean, you could call that cold word or whatever the case may be. You could call it, you could, I call it systemic racism, to be quite honest with you. Now, I'm not accusing Charlie Cassidy of feeling that way. I'm saying what he articulated was that damn offensive. You were a GM in, the Was in Washington. You won a Super Bowl in 1991. But your last 11 years as an executive, you made the playoffs twice. You drafted David Carr. And because of a few words from some anonymous wheat punk scout or, or official for an NFL team who's going to talk about this kid behind his back, clearly trying to sabotage him. You're going to go on the airwaves and speak emphatically and vehemently as if you have firsthand knowledge about the denigrating words that you said about this young man. I think, I think it's egregious. I think it's unfair. I think Todd McShay was right when he talked about it was a bit too harsh. There's several ways he could have couched it. He could have said, yo, this is what they're telling me, but I'm telling you, look at his body of work, but this is what they're saying, so he might need to be mindful. He could have backed it up by saying, there's no justification according to what we've seen, but this is what they're saying. He did none of that, and that is my problem with him and anybody who thinks that what Charlie Cassidy had to say was okay, because it ain't okay. Well, to me, it depends whether or not it's true, whether it makes it okay. Let me start by saying really? this. Yeah, let me start by saying this. Tape is the most important thing on a guy. Like, what do he do? How do he play? And, and, and the reason Kyler Murray's going to go number one is because he balled, you know? And he, would, he was accurate. He could throw the ball down the field. He could run. He could, he could work that offense just like the last guy could work that offense who also meant number one and balled out in the pros. His personality's a little different. Baker Mayfield's more demonstrative. But let's not forget there was questions about Baker Mayfield's leadership also coming out of college because he was overly demonstrative at times and made some questionable calls in terms of sportsmanship, things like that, that Lincoln Riley had to, you know, kind of sit there with Baker Mayfield and answer for. Let me say this. I understand what you mean about these racist tropes that are getting brought up again, you know, um, uh, and it's been said about uh, black players and quarterbacks in particular. I mean, the reason black men were stopped from being quarterback for so long was this idea that they couldn't lead, that they weren't cerebral enough, all these kind of buzzwords that you're now, you're now hearing attached to Kyler Murray. It's very serious. Next, we're going to hear he's not buoyant enough to play quarterback, right? So I understand why, why you get your, why you, you get your uh, you know, dander up about it, Stephen A., because before you make a, a, a kind of character assassination public, you should be very, very careful with a man's reputation, particularly when some of those, that character assassination touches on those kind of racist tropes that I just discussed. So I understand that. On the other hand, if, and it's lying season, as you know, Damian Woody talked about uh, on the show. Will Kane talked about it. This is the time where you can't. He's big enough now. He's strong enough. Like all the measurables are in. Yeah, yeah. He checks off. How can we drop his draft stock so we can maybe get him? Oh, we'll we'll go after his reputation. If that's going on, that's just obviously no good. But we know it happens. Let me just say this though. When I hear that, I do want to know more. I want to know more. I want to know if there is truth in it because what we have found throughout the history of the NFL is. Quarterbacks got to study, got to lead, got to do those things if they want long-term success. So it's not that I'm ready to take it as gospel, and I recognize how responsible you have to be, how carefully you have to consider saying those things before you make it public. I do want to know more, having heard it. It's cool that you want to know more, Max, but here's my problem with the whole situation. Charlie Casserly doesn't know Kyler Murray. And everything you just mentioned about what Kyler Murray has done shows that he has a propensity for leadership, shows that he knows how to read coverages, and shows that he knows board work. What was the whole overlining factor this year when we were talking about coaches that were hot on the next level? Lincoln Riley name came up time and time again about going to the next level and being able to have success. You know what that tells me? 
He's a coach that is tough to go with his offensive scheme and have success. And Kyler Murray was able to do it. Not only at, because we forget, Kyler Murray was at Texas A&M as well with Kevin Sumlin getting a little spare time and almost nipping at the heels to have the starting role at Texas A&M. Goes to Oklahoma, sits a year behind Baker Mayfield, and comes and runs the offense more effectively than Baker Mayfield did. And then Charlie Castle has the nerve and the gall to come out and say this about a kid that he's never one time had a conversation with. I'm going to tell you guys this. I am not going to have a conversation with Max Kellerman or Stephen A. or Molly about you guys when I have access to you. Charlie Casserly could have talked to Kyler Murray on his own. He could have formulated if Kyler Murray knew what the hell he was doing as a football player on his own. But to come out publicly, to your point, Stephen A., and say this about this kid, in this process of the draft, I'm all for critiquing football play. I'm all for critiquing height. I'm critiquing hand size because that's on the field. But when you attack a kid personally and you have the ability to get close to him and actually know if these things are true mm -hmm. or not, and for you to make a statement like that, he's mm -hmm. totally out of line, it's disrespectful, and it does play into the black quarterback effect.